in office for the last year. Uh, prior to that, he served as the Director of Young Adult Engagement in our San Francisco office, and with his family, lived here in the Bay Area for two years. Barack was an Israeli Wexner Fellow and has an MPA from the Kennedy School at Harvard. Uh, he's a distinguished member of our staff, uh, and, and we are very pleased to have him leading our efforts at our Israel office uh, for us. So without further delay, I'd like to welcome Barack and turn the, uh, turn the microphone and the uh, uh, agenda over to him. Thank you. Um, so it's about 70 hours after the ceasefire has, has begun, has started, and a little bit less than two hours um, to the end of the ceasefire. And we actually just got the uh, notifications that missiles are coming in again. Uh, so the negotiation uh, failed, as it seems like it. Um, and we are now back in a phase, in a stage of emergency. Um, so that's, that's where we are at. So let me just give you a quick uh, kind of personal view on exactly where we are at. I'm talking to you from Kibbutz Einat, where, uh, where we live. Uh, me, Karen, my wife, and our four sons, four kids. Um, and I'm actually talking to you from one room at the house, uh, which is the safety room, um, Mamad, uh, actually a shelter built uh, out of cement. So you can see that I'm sitting here and the windows, we have a refrigerator here, and we have, you know, um, a closed, uh, sealed window here. So, um, so we, so we're safe. So once the siren goes off, all the family, uh, you know, gets in, and then, then we're safe. By the way, this is a, a regulation started um, within Israel after 90, 1991, after the Gulf War, where uh, Scud missiles came into Israel. Um, and since then, there's a regulation that actually, um, um, you know, um, uh, uh, every single new house that is, is, uh, is built in Israel since then has to have one room, uh, which is a shelter within your home. So, uh, so once again, this is me. I live uh, with my family in Kibbutz Einat. The boys are sleeping right now. Uh, my wife, Karen, is uh, listening to the news. And we're waiting to see what's going on with this whole uh, kind of collapse of the ceasefire. Um, and let me just give you, you know, a quick disclaimer of this presentation. What you're going to hear, what what I'm I'm, I'm going to share with you, and what actually I won't be able to share with you. So actually, there are many ways to tell you the story of what we did this summer, actually, and what happened here this summer. Um, you know, it is all political. Even the maps that I am going to show you, the choice of a map is political. The choice of where to start to tell the story of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is political. Um, I can be a very kind of manipulative uh, presenter, as you as you all probably see throughout the web. There are many ways to show what's going on here on the Gaza side, on the Palestinian side, on the Israeli side, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to, to do the following, to do three things exactly. One, I want to give you a taste of what this summer looks like from just a regular guy in Israel perspective. Just from us, you know, regular family living in Israel, um, just to give you a sense how this summer looks like for us. The second thing, I'm going to walk you through the occurrence of the event uh, that actually led to the violence and the escalation that we're now uh, experiencing. The third thing I would like to share with you some thoughts uh, about the, you know, our role together as San Francisco Federation, as a San Francisco Jewish community, and the relationship, the potential role that you guys can play here, um, you know, in the morning after, right on the day after. Uh, so I will present, and then we will, as Jim mentioned, we will open it up for questions if you'd like. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this screen with you right now and start a presentation. So hopefully it'll work out. Okay. So 
So, uh, welcome to Israel. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start by telling you that we are a, a, you know an, an office of the Federation of the San Francisco based Jewish Community Federation in Israel, working as an arm of the San Francisco uh, Jewish community here in Israel in promoting few uh, things. But the overarching role of the work we do in Israel is actually um, to strengthen the uh, to strengthen Israel as a pluralistic, democratic, and a just society with equality of opportunity for all its citizens. This office has been working for more than two decades on exactly that and has been doing an amazing work in doing so. Uh, I'm telling you this because I want to frame the conversation in a way that connects the work that we are doing as your representative on the ground here and what's going on on the ground. I want to I want to I want to walk us through uh, through what what happened, you know, a little bit less a little bit uh, less than 2 months ago. June 16, uh, there was a, a, an abduction of three Israeli teenagers by two Palestinians. Um, that brought a huge, uh, you know, uh, a, a huge phenomena of uh, going going out and search, you know, go, going out for for a search for these for these teens. Um, you know, nobody knew whether they they were killed or not. Um, they were reported missing. Um, and both citizens and uh, army forces went out and and searched for them. Uh, somewhere around 18 days on June 30th, a little bit less than 18 days, uh, they were found dead. Uh, I'm showing you this picture of Racheli Frenkel, the mother of Gilad Frenkel, one of the three abducted soldiers, uh, and, and her husband and son and other son. And you know photos from from the funeral uh, itself. There was a huge pain throughout the Israeli society. But I wanna I wanna I wanna give you kind of a you know a, try to give you another another layer here of the work we do in Federation uh, with Federation in Israel. Um, and to mention that in this funeral there was some something else kind of also playing. For example, Cheli Frankel, a modern Orthodox woman. Uh, said the Kaddish on her uh, son's grave. This is the first time that a woman, a religious Orthodox woman in Israel, said out a said loud a Kaddish. Uh, on the audience, by the way, there were the Prime Minister, the Chief Rabbi of Israel, and and many many members of Knesset. Um, you know, a small symbol that actually uh, puts um, you know another kind of layer to this complex picture. Um, as federation, you know, you, you should know that we have been, um, you know, trying to promote, um, you know, uh, to, to empower both Orthodox women and other women throughout Israel in terms of promoting Jewish pluralism and voicing out their voice, um, uh, you, you know, in, in, in whatever is connected to uh, Jewish religious and Jewish practice. Uh, we have, um, we have uh, a program in Israel called Gvanim. Uh, which actually aimed at promoting Jewish pluralism, Racheli Frenkel is one candidate for such a program. Uh, we've met with her uh, already, and she is an amazing voice um, that uh, actually um, kind of representing a new wave or a new phenomena within the ortho orthodoxy in Israel. So that's just another kind of a look, another perspective. Uh, right after the funeral, how, how actually quite you know a few hours after the funeral, uh, this young boy, 16 years old, Palestinian teenagers, teenager named Abu Khader, and Muhammad Mahmoud Abu Khader, uh, was kidnapped and murdered. Three Jewish suspects taken into custody, and actually um, yesterday uh, they were they were sentenced um, in in the court of law in in Israel. Um, 24, hour, 24, hours, 24 hours afterward, uh, this uh, memorial was built. In Hebrew, it says, Kan Nirzach Muhammad Abu Khader. This is the place where the, the 16 years, years old Abu Khader, Muhammad Abu Khader was, was killed, burnt and killed by Jews who did the most un-Jewish thing that could have ever happened. Uh, the people who built this uh, this memorial are actually people who are social activists. Many of them are actually, you know, some of them are, are grantees uh, that wanted in this chaos and this extreme 
you know, violent atmosphere that, that started out right after the funeral, they wanted to give something which is uh, to do, you know, a symbolic thing that, that can show another Jewish way of looking at things. The problem is that 24 hours right, you know, after that, that was the case. This memorial was um, kind of had been breaking, broken down to pieces uh, by other Jewish uh, um, people. Um, that day, um, it was actually July 8, uh, we started to see these pictures, photos uh, on our screens. Um, the discovery of Abu Khadeel's body led to protest and rioting in East Jerusalem, which spread to Arab villages across the country. Um, now, these photos that you see are of Palestinians, Israelis, Israeli Arabs, um, who are, you know, throughout Israel, uh, went out to riots and demonstrations and, um, you know, just, just you know, to, to keep all of us in uh, kind of in, on, on the same page, um, the Arab population, the Palestinian population in Israel, within Israel, encompasses around 20% of the Israeli um, society. Um, many of what we do, or much of what of the work that Federation has been doing in the last two decades, um, is actually to uh, work with this minority in Israel, with the Arab, with the Palestinian Israeli minority, um, in in various uh, in various uh, things. We worked with this community on economic development, uh, on you know through education. We worked with them on economic development through employment and employability, and you know helping with scholarships and 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 you know helping them reach uh, or lower the barriers to academy. And so on and so forth. So we are extremely invested um, and partners with many of these organizations. Now, you need to know that in that day, and you can see the map here because these were the kind of the centers of the of the riots. In these uh, specific places where you see the riots and the demonstrations, Federation is actually involved in doing great, great things with this specific community. I'm showing you this because I, I actually want to want to share with you um, the complexity uh, and the kind of um, you know a, a sense of the crisis that we now feel with our uh, you know grantees and people we work with and so on and so forth. Um, because you know in the in in, this, in j just in the north uh, we we you saw you know in Nazareth right here. Um, while there are, while, while there were, you know, a little bit riots and demonstrations, this is the same place where we operate a program together with an organization called SOFEN on empowering uh, Arab women on working on high tech and becoming, you know, um, um, either software engineers or IT and so on. Um, right here near Caesarea, you can see uh, the, the village called Jisera Zarka. In, inside Jisar Zarka, this uh, Arab guy and this woman, a Jewish woman, started together a hostel, a hostel, a youth hostel, um, and we are helping them uh, through a an impact grant initiative that we have. We're helping them put together this hostel because this hostel is aimed at, um, you know, developing uh, economically and educationally. Um, the the village of Jisera Zarka. What we found out lately is that people from this village actually threw stones to the main road, road number two. Um, and, you know, once again, it's just another layer of the complexity of our work here. The value, but also the crisis that we now feel. Many of our fr friends and partners on the Arab side in Israel uh, you know, didn't pick up the phone when we called them uh, lately in, in the last few weeks. Um, they themselves are in a, in a huge crisis of identity. Many of them are identifying with, Palesti with the Palestinian, you know, people. Many of them have actually family in Gaza. They have aunts, they have uncles, they have grandparents in Gaza. They are torn up, really, uh, between their loyalty to Palestinian, to the Palestinian people and to the state of Israel where they are citizens in. Um, um, you know, going south to Jerusalem and to and, and more to the to uh, the area of Beersheba, you can see here another program that we have 
uh, when we actually bring Jewish teens and Bedouin, young Bedouin women and Ethiopian women, Jewish Ethiopian women together uh, to kind of, a, you know, a shared group that works throughout the year on working on building a shared society um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a school that you can see here, a school that is called Hagar, Jewish Arab Education for Equality. So we have a lot, lots, lots of work throughout the years on these specific, uh, you know, uh, kind of theme. Um, JCF, the Jewish Community Federation, is, is involved in many other programs in Israel. Um, not only, you know, throughout the, uh, among the Jewish and Arab uh, uh, community, you know, we, we, we support lots of programs that deal with youth at risk, uh, with, uh, you know, integrating the Haredi community to work and to the IDF. We work with the Ethiopian uh, Israeli community. We work with the early, early childhood education um, uh, field within the Arab community. And now I want to take you to the reality that we are living in since that day, since the day of July 8. Um, you know, just imagine 101 or 280 on your way to work. This is my way to work, uh, the Ayalon uh, Road, in, right in the center of Tel Aviv. These photos are taken from uh, the cities of Ashdod, of Tel Aviv. Um, and, you know, just, just imagine, this is summer vacation for us and for the kids. And this is how our summer looks like in 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 the last um, in in the last uh, you know actually two months, um, this is how it looks like. So once again, uh, from our, from my perspective, as a parent to four kids, and you know, as a father, as a son, what happened in this time when you hear this siren? Uh, you know, all you think of is where your precious, precious one are. At the same time, you want to call everybody on their iPhones. You want to make sure that everybody is safe. Um, and this is quite crazy. Fifteen seconds. If you're really close to uh, to to Gaza, you can see here the. Uh, the threat, actually, the uh, the map. Uh, so it goes from 15 seconds to 30 seconds, uh, um, kind of alert. And we live somewhere here in the in the center of Israel, uh, which we are, you know, so lucky to have more than a minute uh, to get into the shelter. Which you find out some, you know, suddenly you find out that a minute is really a long, long time. You can actually grab your baby in the middle of the night. And you can grab another, 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 you know, boy on the other hand, and your wife goes and bring water, and the other brings battery, and we all get into the shelter and shut the door. So that was our reality in the last two months. Um, I'm sure you've heard about the Iron Dome. It's an amazing um, uh, system, um, you know. Mainly supported by the U.S. government and, and, and developed here in Israel, um, it worked. It's still working, uh, quite amazing. Um, but but uh, now we have another threat that we actually were ex was was exposed to uh, only recently. So if the rockets doesn't work, then we now know about tunnels that the Palestinian um, terrorists, the Hamas terrorists. Um, actually dug in under the ground. And these, these photos that I'm, I'm showing you right now, 
uh, are photos that the people in Israel saw. Uh, and, and I think that that, I think, had a, had a huge effect on, the, on, on how the, the public in Israel related to this whole operation, the protective edge operation, and the, cred and the credit that the government and the IDF got in actually entering Gaza and starting uh, the, you know, the, the whole escalation of, uh, of this war or, or operation. Um, what we saw is our backyard. People on Kibbutzim and Moshavim and cities saw this. These are, you know, Hamas terrorists coming out of the ground And what we know now is that their plan was actually to get after they, they dug these holes and came out of these holes from, you know, from within a kibbutz, right, near a cheder near a dining room of a kibbutz, uh, making a mega kind of terror attack, like a mega, you know, 9-11 kind of a terror attack within settlements and, and uh, kibbutzim. So these are the photos that we, we keep seeing on our media. I must tell you, I really, you know, didn't want you to, you know, to be exposed to other much crueler and and hard, really hard, um, you know, hard to see uh, photos of kids in Gaza and here. The number of casualties in Gaza uh, have rose and is now somewhere around the 1,800 um, and, and thousands of wounded uh, people. Uh, there are hundreds of wounded people in Israel and more than 63 soldiers and officers uh, killed. Um, you know, th th this is this is how, this is the the photos we're surrounded with. I'm sure many of you see that on the news. Um, and few things happen, and I want to share with you, you know, what happened here within the Israeli society um, uh, here. Um, first, solidarity. You know. Federation, as other federations throughout the throughout the U.S. and actually the world, uh, have joined together and 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 went out in a, in a campaign, the stop the stop the sirens campaign. And with this campaign, uh, we actually uh, managed to take hundreds, or actually thousands already, of kids out of the war zone, out of Israel. You know, we took Israeli kids, Jewish Israeli kids, from the south. Um, we took them out to the north. And you know, just just help them, you know, experience some normal summer days, in swimming pool and kibbutzim and villages and so on and so forth. We actually use this money also uh, to uh, to bring more and more kind of shelters. These are mobile shelters that you see here that we bring into uh, schools or into you know uh, uh, community centers and so on. As you saw the old lady in the in this short clip beforehand, there are many people with disabilities who needs help while they have 15 seconds to get into a shelter. Um, the, the Stop the Sirens the campaign helped do that as well. Uh, so in terms of community resiliency, in terms of respite, in, ter in terms of uh, you know, crisis response training, um, and, and you know, lots, lots, lots of psychological counseling, um, you know, uh, the post-trauma and through trauma uh, counseling and treatment, uh, this is, you know, some of the money that was actually allocated and still being allocated today by the Jewish federations, um, when the San Francisco Federation is, is, a, is a major part there um, throughout, throughout Israel. And I want to show you a solidarity from within as well. What happened here in the last, you know, few weeks is quite amazing. You could see like hundreds, thousands of packages being packaged by, you know, regular Israelis who just wanted to send, you know, something for the soldiers. Uh, soldiers went out in the news and said, you know what, thank you so much, uh, but please stop because we're going to get, you know, diabetes here from all these candies and sugar that you guys are sending us. But, but people kept sending, you know, um, uh, uh, underwear and, um, um, and, uh, and, 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 and more stuff and so on. So we have uh, we, we we have lots of uh, phenomena of uh, you know kind of a, a solidarity. We have uh, we we had an, an an amazing exciting phenomena of a lone soldiers from South California uh, named Max Steinberg that actually uh, was killed. We weren't sure whether you know we will have a minion for his uh, funeral. He is a lone soldier. His family is from South California, um, and thirty thousand people came to mourn 
and do his funeral. Funeral. Another amazing thing was the Haredi community, who is you that is usually apart or segmented from the you know uh, kind of uh, overall Israeli society, actually take a painful took a painful part in it. We had a terror attack of a tractor driver from Jabal Mukaber in Jerusalem, right? You know, uh, on August fourth. Um, that actually took the tractor that you see, went with this tractor and actually flipped this bus, this public bus, upside down. And by doing that, uh, a rabbi, Avram Wallace, uh, was killed. Um, he is a part of a community called Toldot Aaron, which is a non-Zionist community, Haredi community. So things are are so complicated and have you know so too, too many, so many layers to it. In terms of the global or the international kind of uh, realm, uh, we have experienced in the beginning a lot of you know solidarity mission. We saw it in San Francisco, in the West Coast, in the East Coast, and other places in Europe uh, as well. But what we see now is really uh, the opposite. We see a lot, lots, lots of anti-Israel um, demonstrations, and we uh, in Israel already are set up to the um, UN dis- decision to come up with a with a with a you know, with the with this um, in, uh, investigating committee committee that will uh, be put together. So, what's the next slide? How how would the day after look like? And I'll end here. Um, I wanna, I, you know, I'm not a politician. I'm not a policymaker. I'm, you know, as I said, I'm I'm your guy on the ground. And I wanna tell you, I'm first. I feel the luckiest guy here, uh, really, because. Working with and for the San Francisco Jewish community now, after two decades of investing so much money, efforts, and building friends and coalitions here on really helping Israelis building a sh- build a shared society, we are positioned so well in helping government and NGOs to look at the next, you know, at the day after, acknowledge that whatever your politics is. 20% of us are Arabs, and we're going to live together. If we, you know, if we're meant to live together, or if we're doomed to, get, to live together, we're going to live together. So our role as federation here is to partner with whoever wants to partner with us and take and capitalize on everything we did up until now and, and build the next chapter of Israel and of Zionism. Um, so that is it for now, and would love to answer your questions. Thank you, Barack. Uh, I want to, again, thank everyone on the call for spending time with us this afternoon uh, and for investing your philanthropic dollars in such important work uh, that's being done in Israel. Uh, There will be, I want to let everyone know, there will be a uh, a very brief survey uh, that will be sent to you. Uh, The brief time it takes for you to fill that out really helps us to uh, plan these kinds of events uh, more effectively uh, and to serve you better. Again, thank you to Barack. I want to uh, uh, open it up for anybody who would like to uh, send questions. Again, if you look, it should be on the upper right-hand side of your screen. There should be a little uh, thought bubble uh, that if you roll your cursor over that, it will say click here to chat, and if you uh, tap on that uh, icon, you can type in a, a question. Uh, and uh, and Barack uh, will be available. Those who need to leave the call, we did call it for 12:45 uh, end. So if you need to leave the call, we understand. If you'd like to stay on, Barack will uh, stay on the line with us here for another 15 minutes. So, Brock, we've got a question uh, from Murray. What more can we do? So, so first, the you know, I think we have a lot to do now. Um, when we were in time of crisis, meaning you know, when, when we are now, and it seems like unfortunately we're entering, we're, we might be entering to another cycle of violence. But it seems like in this acute phase phase in this emergency phase what we can do is actually help and and help this campaign of stop the sirens campaign and really help all of us help the people in the south as much as we can but but while we're doing that just you know for you to fit, to know that we're working intensively 
on finding the moderate voices within the Israeli society that we can work with in the next, in, you know, in, on, on, on the day after, um, to work with on building coalitions of Jews, Arabs, from all the segments of the populations of the population and work with them on you know really building a solid and resilient society here uh, together it's not something that that will be kind of a magic um but we uh, we we you know we, we're surely kind of focused on that so what more can we do keep asking that because you know as the situation evolves we we will have more needs but for now we are in an acute phase where we need your help in you know helping with the trauma and with with the trauma treatment and with taking kids out of there thank Debbie. you barack uh debbie i, I let me uh barack, maybe while i'm addressing this uh for debbie uh at a high level you could pull that slide back up because uh, i believe you did have a slide that uh showed the allocations uh from stop the sirens to date debbie um the uh impact of the stop the sirens i'm happy to forward to you we actually have a, a, a pretty um extensive list of the allocations that have been made uh, from the Stop the Sirens campaign. Nationally, the campaign has raised about $35 million. Uh, that's from all 160 or so federations in North America. Uh, if you're asking specifically uh, in terms of our uh, local campaign, our local Stop the Sirens campaign, uh, we are at currently about $560,000 uh, in total funds raised here. Uh, as part of the overall national uh, uh, Stop the Sirens effort, or not, I shouldn't say national, it's actually North American. Uh, and again, uh, Barack, maybe if, you, if you'd like to pull that slide up, or Debbie, again, as I said, I can send you a more extensive, uh, I think Barack had a, uh, just a summary of, of the areas that the allocations have been going to, but I've actually got a fairly extensive list that's been provided by the JFNA Allocations Committee that's been managing uh, the campaign. I'm happy to send that to you. Uh, yeah, here we go. And yes, I will send you. Uh, so, Barack, this looks to me to be uh, from the first allocation that the, was done. The first allocation, exactly. Yeah, okay. That's the first allocation. Yeah, great. So, so, uh, so, Debbie, I've got, uh, I've also got information on the second allocation, and, and as well as I say, a little bit more detail on it. So, I will forward those to you. Great, great question, Murray. I, I will tell you that that uh, we we signed uh, the staff here got together and and signed a very large oversized card uh, that we sent to uh, to our Israel office staff uh, a few weeks ago, just sending them our very best wishes. But you ask uh, how uh, our community can communicate with our grantees to show support. So actually, actually, uh, I, I, so we would love to you know to uh, to be your people on the ground to do that. Actually, if you can send us whatever needed. I mean, you can log on to the, to the, to the uh, uh, Federation website and see the various grantees that we have and the project that they are running. You'll see their, their connection to what's going on on the ground. Many of them are highly invested now in, you know, either uh, adapting their programs and, and you know, kind of, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 putting resources that they don't have actually putting resources in, in doing educational activities and bringing kids um, into, into uh, activities um, um, th th throughout the summer um, and, and are investing so much time in, uh, in figuring out how, how more can, can, you know, can, can we do. So many of them are working inside the shelters. Many are many of them are like going to hospitals and helping you know wounded of this uh, of this operation. Um, and what you can do, I think, is you know either write something to them. We would love to to uh, you know to be your kind of a messengers and and to do that. Um, you know whatever works. We we'd love to uh, to kind of transit this this message of support for them. Thank you, Barack. Any other questions? 
Okay, again, I'm going to thank everybody for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, Barack, for you for joining us this evening. It's late there. Thank you for taking time away from your family. Uh, please go back and, and uh, well, I guess the boys are, are in bed, but uh, please uh, uh, back to uh, Karen and, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. I, we did get one more question from Murray regarding support uh, missions. Murray, um, you're aware of the missions, uh, I think, that... Uh, uh, that we've been that we've been uh, been organized nationally, uh, and and I think what we'll do is is maybe take this offline. Murray, I'd love to talk with you more about that question, um, and and uh, happy to contact you to 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 uh, have that conversation. So for now, I think uh, I'm a, I'm sure I'm joined by everybody who's been participating uh, today, and I know by everybody here uh, in in sending thoughts of peace to you, Brock, and and continue to hope for your uh, for your well-being, your families, and of course for uh, for, for strength. So thank you again. Uh, thank that you. concludes our session today. Shalom. Shalom.